Hi, my name is Emma Miller, and in this video we're going to look at the basics of painting with watercolors. So I'm going to be using pages from my Painting Pages gift box set, um, but the things that I'll teach today will apply to any kind of watercolor painting. Okay, so now we're going to look at our supplies. We've got our paper for our painting pages. We've got our brushes. You're going to want to get a little cup of water to dip your brushes in. Um, grab a paper towel to blot your brushes. We've got our painting set with 18 different colors. We've got our water brush, which is really good if you're painting in a location where you can't have a jar of water out. You can actually store water inside the brush and then that eliminates having to dip it in water. You just squeeze the brush and the water comes out to mix with the paints. We've got our sponge, which is another good option. If you don't have a paper towel with you, you can blot on the sponge. And then we've got this tiny little water well, um, if you want to use that to hold your water in. So when you're painting with watercolor, you always start with a puddle of water and then you add your paints to the water on the palette. So we'll start with our water, add the paint to it. The more paint you add, the more pigmented your paint will be. The brighter it will be, the darker it will be. The more water you add, the lighter it'll be, and the more runny it'll be. So when we paint with watercolors, you always wanna start with more general and work to more specific. So you'll start with general washes, kind of covering the area that you wanna paint, and then as that dries, you'll add in more details. If you wanna paint directly on the watercolor while it's still wet, you can. Um, but what happens is kind of a cool effect. You get a lot of bleed and the colors move around in an interesting way. Whereas if you wait until it dries to paint on it, you get more details. And obviously if you paint directly on the paper, the dry paper, you're able to get a lot more detailed than if you paint anywhere where it's already wet. Because watercolor is transparent and you can't paint over and entirely cover up things that you've already painted, you have to think about it kind of the way you think about stained glass. The paper is your light, it's, it's your white, it's what's coming through and anywhere that you need to keep light, you're gonna leave a lot of the paper showing through. Um, and then you're gonna layer colors and darkness over top of it. So think about it ahead of time when you start your painting, think about the areas that need to stay light and make sure that you're not putting too much paint on those areas because once you paint over it, you can't get it lighter. It can only go darker. So when you're painting with watercolor, you wanna make sure you're doing a couple of things. You wanna make sure you're working from general to specific. You don't wanna paint details right away. You wanna paint big washes to cover the bulk of your painting um, and then come in with the details later. You wanna work light to dark because you can't get light areas back. Um, so painting with a lot of water at first and then moving to more pigmented paint. Another thing to keep in mind is that watercolor always dries lighter than it looks when you're painting it on and it dries, dries a little duller than it looks when you're painting it on. Um, so don't be afraid to use bright and dark colors because when it dries it has the tendency to look a little bit washed out. So you want to combat that by using lots of real vivid colors because they always dry a little bit duller than you think they're going to. Okay, let's go ahead and do a painting page together. So the first thing I do when I start a painting page is I try and visualize what the finished product is gonna look like. Oftentimes I will pull up a reference picture if I want to achieve a higher level of realism, or I'll simply think about the colors that I want to include. And um, another important thing is to think about where the light source is coming from. So on this carrot, I'm gonna say that the light source is coming from this upper right hand corner. So that's gonna inform how I paint all of my shadows and my highlights on my carrot. So like with any watercolor project, I'm gonna work from light and general to more specific and dark. So I'm gonna start with a light orange base to paint on my carrot. I never wanna use straight orange paint right out of the palette. I'm gonna augment it a little bit with some yellow and some red. Whenever I can, I try and mix colors from primary colors rather than use them straight out of the palette. This is getting a little bit dark, so I'm gonna add more water. And I'm gonna test it out first 
on this page to make sure I like the color. Okay, I want that to be a little bit more yellow. There, I like that a lot better. So, keeping in mind that the highlight of my carrot is gonna be on this right side, I'm gonna paint in this full area of the carrot, but make sure it doesn't get too dark, especially on that area. Don't be afraid to paint outside of the lines a little bit on this. Um, I think that can look kind of cool. And definitely use your own creativity to put your own spin on this. Um, now that I've got the whole base painted, I'm kind of going in with more paint and dropping it in on the edge where the shadow's gonna be. And I got a little too much on, so I'm gonna dry off my brush. And whenever you dry your brush and put it into wet paint, it's gonna kind of suck up some of that paint. So I'm coming back through and pulling out a little bit of the paint on the highlight side. Now, while that's drying, I'm gonna to switch to a smaller brush and I'm gonna start on the green part of the carrot. We'll start with our lightest, lightest shade of green. I'm gonna mix my green with yellow, blue, until I get the shade that I want. Add a bit more water so it stays light. Test it out. Yep, that looks good. So I'm just gonna paint this in real generally wherever I see leaves. And I'm not being super careful about staying in the lines because I kind of like the way it looks, especially in areas with lots of little details like this to kind of paint it more generally. I'm just gonna blob it on. In some of these areas, the paint got a little too thick, so I'll wipe off my brush on the paper towel and then suck up some of that paint. I'm gonna go ahead and paint the stem. And while this is still wet, I'm gonna go ahead and mix a darker shade of green that I can drop into this wet paint and let it move around a little bit to get that cool effect. Um, this screen's getting a little bright, so in order to tone it down, I have two options. I could put a little bit of brown in it, or I could put the complement color, which would be the opposite on the color wheel, red, and that'll help tone it down. Oop, too toned down. Color mixing is a process. You just have to be patient and keep adding paints until it looks the way you want. I'm gonna test it out first. Add a little bit more blue. All right, now I'm gonna drop it into this wet paint. Let it move around a little bit. I'm gonna dry off my brush and kind of help it along. Spread it out, and I'm gonna pull some of this darker color down into the stems. Now that my carrot over here is almost dry, I'm gonna mix a darker color for my shadow. Um, I'll go back to this orange that I mixed earlier, and I'm just gonna add a little bit more red and a tiny little bit of blue, which is the opposite of orange, to make it a little bit duller and a little bit darker. There we go. And I'm gonna paint this in along my shadow edge. The areas where the paint's still wet, it's gonna move around a little bit. Um, but down here, where the carrot's dry, I can get more detail. So I'm gonna come in and add a little bit of a shadow on all of these wrinkles. All right, we're almost finished. The last thing that I'm gonna do, um, and this is 
optional, you don't have to do this, but I kind of like the way it looks to add a little bit of a watercolor shadow. Um, so I'm gonna mix just a neutral gray color to be my shadow. I'll do this by adding black to my little puddle of water, a little bit of blue to make it a cooler tone shadow. And because the light source is coming from the upper right hand corner, the shadow will be on the left side. Because my orange paint is a little wet, it might bleed into the shadow a little bit, but I'm okay with that. So it's a pretty dark shadow right now, but I'm going to come back in a second with my dry brush and diffuse it a little bit. Whenever you're trying to blend the edge of a color, just switch to a dry brush and that can kind of help you diffuse a hard edge. And if it's not as diffused as you want, just dry your brush off again and repeat the process. Okay, I think I'm finished with this. Um, sometimes it's hard to know when to be finished with a painting, but if you can get it to the point where you kind of like it, it often helps to just put a signature on the bottom and then it feels a little bit more complete. So I'm going to sign this. Usually I just sign it with a color that I used in the painting, so I'll go with my dark green. Sign my name. Finished. So we did this carrot painting together, but the principles that we learned in this and the techniques and the kind of step-by-step -step formula for painting it would work for any of the painting pages and basically anything you paint in watercolor. You're always gonna work from general to specific and from light to dark. So hopefully that's helpful and hopefully you have a really fun time painting with watercolor. <laughs>